Welcome back to another UNC Tar Heels football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you are checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I am THI publisher Andrew Jones. And joining me, as she always does when we talk Carolina football recruiting, our director of football recruiting here at THI, Miss Dina King. And Dina, Another commitment for Mac Brown and his program. They picked up offensive lineman, three-star offensive lineman, Justin Kenyuk, who attends Bethlehem Catholic High School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Someone who recently popped up on the radar and bam, things happen pretty quickly. Six foot seven, 290 pounds. He is the number 29 overall prospect in the state of Pennsylvania. And by the way, it's not just things picked up quickly for him at UNC. It's across the board in his recruitment. UNC offered, Maryland followed, Virginia followed, a bunch of other schools. He's got a ton of Ivy League interest. This is a kid with high academic standards. I'm sure that was part of the appeal going to UNC. But he has other big-time schools that have shown a lot of interest. He was recently at Penn State, as an example. So, Dina, you've actually – you were on this. When this kid came, you actually texted me. I'd never heard of him. You said they offered this kid. I'll get more – or I'll get more information, Andrew. <laughs> And, uh, and you did. You've learned a lot about him. You've talked to him a bunch of times. So fill everybody in on what kind of player Justin Kenyuk is and how this played out. Some background. He, he's a kid that, 2022 kid that probably didn't get the opportunity to go to a lot of schools, was under the radar because of COVID. And when June 1st opened up, he took advantage. He he came south from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and he came by through Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina. He came to North Carolina, worked out for the Tar Heels, took an unofficial. Coach Searles loved what he saw. He offered him. Now, this kid, he didn't have he didn't even have much of a, a rival's profile. He didn't, wasn't even ranked or anything, had any stars. He got an offer from Liberty and Maryland on this trip because he stopped by, like, I guess, basically his recruiting trail came came south and got all those offers uh, here lately. He got, like you said, he picked up an offer for Virginia. So he was using June as a lot of these kids just to get out and face-to-face -face meeting and working out with these coaches and taking advantage of it. So uh, – his visit, his first visit to UNC, where he worked out, he loved it. He told me, you know, uh, I mean, he fell in love with UNC, liked everything about it, uh, picked up the offer, felt blessed. Um, I have a sense, I had a sense that after her, the comments that he said, he was, he was really uh, wanting to be a Tar Heel, <laughs> and um, he set up he set up an official on the, the last weekend that they could in June. And, you know, it, it, it moved fast for him. I mean, uh, Mac Brown and the staff really made an impression. And the school recruited itself, you know, with top academics, top athletic programs, good facilities, great coaching staff. So, I mean, Justin Canyon from a, a Pennsylvania kid, I always there's certain states that you feel like, man, they're just a foot. They're just a football. They come from a football. Uh, you know, Texas is another one. You know that. You know, if you get a kid from Pennsylvania, they're going to be tough, especially an offensive lineman like him, six seven, two ninety. You know, he's he lives and breathes and and eats football because I mean the 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 historical perception of uh, kids from Pennsylvania. Yeah, offensive linemen, tight ends, of course, quarterbacks, quite a few really good quarterbacks come from Pennsylvania. Uh, great football culture up there. Um, what, what I find interesting about this recruitment, and you and I have learned this over the last couple of years, as I think we're now really, we really understand exactly uh, the, 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 the approach that Mac and his staff have to recruiting. And I know that when some coaching staffs offer a kid with no star rating, fan bases go into meltdown. They, they, why are they offering that kid? What the heck? But I think people understand that, especially with COVID, 
And I'm glad you pointed that out because that really has been a factor for a kid like Justin Kanyak. But you have to trust what the what these coaches see. Stacy Searle's been around this stuff for a long time, coached in major programs. He knows what he's looking at. Mac knows what he's looking at. Longo knows what he's looking at. And I and I go back to Cayman Rucker two years ago. I'll never forget. He came for a visit. They offered. He committed that Monday. And I remember talking to him and about why he committed. A lot of the same reasons that Justin Kanyak has told you. And People didn't know a lot about Cayman Rucker. They thought, why are they going to take a kid like him? Why don't they hold out for somebody better? Well, who got 25 snaps in his first game as a true freshman last year against Syracuse? Cayman Rucker. Who's a big part of what they're building that defense right? Who fits in perfectly? Cayman Rucker. They know what they want. And when they look at a kid, especially when you get a chance to coach Kenyuk uh, in person, they know exactly how he would fit in. So this is obviously a case where – if you understand the staff and, and, and respect what they have done in the past and are doing now, just trust what they do. This is our message to Carolina fans watching this. Trust the staff. Trust what they're doing here. They know a lot more about this stuff than we do. And when you've got Justin Kennedy in front of you for a whole day working out, you know what you're dealing with. And well, not- we've, we've talked about it multiple times. You know, Matt's staff, you look at, look at what he's got around him. Sparky Woods, Daryl Moody, who was the NFL scout for a long time, Kenny Browning, who is one of the most well-respected coaches, high school coach in North Carolina for a long time and was at UNC several years as a defensive line coach, and now he's one of Mac's advisors. You got those three guys. I mean, that's over 100 years' experience. All right, guys, don't well over over showing years. showing the age and everything. But really, I you mean, you could go well north of know, 100 years, my friend. Well, yeah, but I'm just being being nice. But, yeah, you mentioned, I mean, Coach Searle's got to see this kid and in, in go through a workout. And like I've said numerous times, you can't teach height and size, 6'7", 290. He's a prototype of what they like. You know, they like the big, big, tall guys, and, you know, they can put, I mean, 290, he's a good size for a tackle that he could put on 20 pounds of, of college muscle and get Coach Hess in there with him and get his body all um, tuned up and everything. So, I mean, yeah, people look at rankings and ratings and stars, but, Trust Mac and his his group down there. They 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 have the eye to what they want, and uh, this is a kid they wanted. For some of the younger Carolina fans that might be watching this, uh, if you go back into the '90s, Mac did a good job recruiting right away at Carolina, but it really took off when Kenny Browning became part of the staff, and and he was so integral in them elevating the level of talent in that program, and. You know, when Mac goes and sits down in a room and he's got Woods, he's got Moody, and he's got Browning, he listens. There's a reason they're there. And we, and you know what? Every time I go there, pre-COVID and now post-COVID, every time I go there, I see at least one of those guys. Whether I'm there we for, saw, I saw all three of them. Yeah, but I'm gonna talk, even, like, even when I'm there to do player interviews, like on Tuesday evening, it's funny, or, or like or Mac and the coordinators on a Monday – you know, we'll, we'll see Moody walking by, you know, because we get to stay and work in the player, sort of a lounge area on the fifth floor, I guess it is. And I'll, I'll hammer out my, my, my report and whatnot. I'll see him walking around. You might see Browning walk by. Every time I go there, I see at least one of those guys and often multiple. They're an enormous part of this program. And I'm telling you right now, it's not just Stacey Searle saying, I want this kid. They are all a part of this process. So, there's a lot that goes into an offer. It's not, they're not throwing them out like, like handing them out like candy on Halloween. They're not just casting this massive net and hoping they get 15, 20 kids to say, I do. There's a, an intricate process here that goes into this. And they obviously liked a lot about what they saw from Justin Candy. And so did Maryland and so did Virginia and Penn State's closing in on this thing too. Uh, there's some other schools obviously looking at them plus all the Ivy. So I think it's a good pickup for North Carolina. I, I love the Cayman Rucker example because we talked about it when he committed, and I even talked to Cayman about it some. And he's one of those kids, yeah, I'll show him I can play. 
So there, that, I think that that's uh, one of the other elements here that when you talked about Justin Kennedy, he said, I'll show them I can play kind of guy. Yeah, and being from Pennsylvania, you know, you mentioned Penn State, Pittsburgh. Yep. Uh, you know, they're, they're really good football up there. So, I mean, uh, Max said they would go outside the blueprint. Let's be honest, the, the offensive line prospects in North Carolina has it. Um, maybe been like in years past, and so they've had to go out of out of state to get some of these guys. Justin Kenyuk is the latest member of the class of 22 to pop for Mac Brown and the Tar Heels. The class is filling up, Dana. It's fun times, exciting times. We knew that the summer once June hit would be electrifying, and it certainly has been. She's Dana King. I'm Andrew Jones. Thanks for stopping by.